And welcome back to CentralCoastRadio.com. Well, we're going to take a look now at a brand new film that is out in cinemas right now. And uh, normally when a director like Robert Rodriguez teamed up with somebody like Ben Affleck, uh, you'd be seeing posters everywhere and there'd be a huge media blitz on the film. But for some reason, Hypnotic has actually crept into Australian cinemas with very, very little fanfare. Um, yes, Robert Rodriguez is back in both the writer's chair and director's chair with this film, and the film begins with a detective, uh, called Danny Rourke, played by Ben Affleck, who has suffered after his daughter was kidnapped, um, from a park while he was there. Now, he returns back to work, and on the first day he returns back to work, he finds himself involved in a really weird kind of crime um, where he's receiving help by Diana Cruz, played by Alice Braga, but at the same time meets a really, really weird guy called Del Rain, played by William Finchner. Now, this film goes into some really deep topics, such as um, can somebody be hypnotized to do a crime and things like that, but this film has so many twists and turns that it's actually very, very difficult to talk about um, with the plot without giving anything major away but uh kyle let's start with you what did you think of hypnotic yeah as you say this one definitely kind of crept up on us um i was looking at the uh, uh, upcoming film releases and then suddenly there's this ben affleck movie that i've never heard of with, with robert rodriguez directing it and yeah it just had no no trailers no nothing that that we saw but i mean I, I, I was excited to see it because I, I saw that it was kind of like a a uh, some kind of a, a mystery twisted twisted kind of story. Um, like and and Ben Affleck has been in some great great films recently, and I mean Robert Rodriguez, despite having some duds, like I, I, I still love Desperado, Sin City, like Faculty. Dust till dawn, and even I even thought his his Planet Terror segment of Grindhouse was better than than Quentin Tarantino's. But like this, this is it's a movie that's very kind of slapdash and and scrappy in in how it's been put together. And I, I think that whatever interesting concepts or story that it could have had just kind of fall flat. And very much it feels like almost like a, a, a made for TV production and not a, not a huge film directed by Robert Rodriguez and starring Ben Affleck. Like, um, f- from the very story, like the idea of, of hypnosis being used like so very, very heavily in, in the film's plot. It, it, as you say, it's, it's, it's difficult to really talk about the movie, um, uh, without spoiling anything, but I mean, <sighs> Just hypnosis itself is something that I think is very, very difficult of, of a hurdle, like for me, because like while while I feel that while I feel that there, there's there's something behind hypnosis, and I think it's an interesting idea, like so often it's just used as as, as like a cheap plot device. It's just kind of portrayed very lazily, like like how it was done in the Now You See Me movies. Yeah. Like, there's very little done here, I think, to make it believable, other than just saying, oh, there's some people that are really super-duper amazing at it, and that's it. And, like, <sighs> there, there was a moment in the film that I, I found really found it really interesting. It was when, uh, uh, like, Ben Affleck's character, he, he was pretty much, uh, like, pretty much involved in this mystery while he couldn't actually trust anybody or even really his own perceptions of reality or or what he himself might unknowingly do like that i thought was really interesting but it was really only one scene that 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 happened in and um the film doesn't explore too much because as as we say there's so many twists and like rug pulls that reshape the entire narrative that by the end of the film it, it, it's contradicted itself so much that it's impossible to really care about the plot anymore. 
because you're like effectively you're introduced to it to, to like it, it like resets the table every 15 minutes as the, as the film goes on so by the end of the movie it, it's really hard to care about anything that's going on because you don't know what's happening anymore and a lot of the time it just seems to con- like really contradict itself as it goes on this isn't like a movie that I would want I, I feel like it's not the kind of movie I would watch again and think oh well they they set this up really well at the beginning I feel like it's a kind of movie if I watched it again I would think wow that makes no sense why that would happen like with what I what you find out towards the end of the film and I mean I, I started what while watching the movie I, I started thinking that kind of the scrappiness of the movie was even it was even scrappier more than usual for Rodriguez's movie. And I know he does a lot of his own special effects and music and his own editing and stuff. But I think that the, I think maybe an issue that I that was maybe a cause for this film being kind of scrappy the way that it is is that it's it's very much like a a, a family affair. Like it, it's something that's very much been made um, in the same way that. Robert Rodriguez made his Spy Kids movies and stuff like that, where it was something that he had his kids working on, and that was when it was the Spy Kids movies. I thought that was endearing. I thought that was cute. Like, but there are kids movies, you know. Like, this is something that's um, it's more like an adult mystery thriller, and I think that the editing of the movie that's handled by uh, one of his sons, the music in the movie that's handled by another one of his sons. Those are things that when I was watching the movie, I thought it's not like the chase scenes and action scenes just were really edited kind of poorly. And then when I find out, like, why, I'm starting to think, like, okay, maybe that's why. But, like, I don't know. I just don't think that uh, as, a, as a movie it really comes together really well. And it just feels very much like a, a uh, kind of a cheaply made made for TV production. So, yeah, I was kind of disappointed in it, even though I didn't really know much about it a week ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I kind of wondered whether or not this film would have had a bigger impact if it had come out when Robert Rodriguez first wrote it, because apparently he wrote this film way back in 2002. Um, and I kind of, why I say that is because when I was watching this film, I kept on seeing things that had wowed me previously in other films, so you mentioned like now you see me. That was one of the films I was thinking of. I was thinking of Inception. Um, I was thinking of uh, Synchronic, um, the film that came out a couple of years ago, especially with the the look of the film and 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 the feel of the film. And then the second half of the film feels a lot like the Zac Efron remake of Firestarter that came out last year. And I kind of wonder whether if this film had been made back in 2002, whether we would have been sitting there going, wow, this is something that we've never seen before. Like the, the, the shots of like the, the world folding on itself. Um, we probably would have been like, wow, I've never seen that. Whereas now we go, Oh, well I saw that in inception. Um, the same with the, the, the look of the film. Um, it's interesting because with this film, I keep on thinking that look, and the tinge to the film, I saw that in Synchronic, whereas if I hadn't have seen Synchronic a couple of years ago, I probably would have been thinking, wow, I really like what they've done with the colour um, palette of this film. So, yeah, I find that really um, interesting that, yeah, I think if this film had been made 20 years ago, we probably would have been sitting here going, wow, this is some kind of cinematic masterpiece that, um, that Rodriguez has written and directed, but because we've seen it, um, it now feels like it's kind of a, a der- not derogative, what, um, a derivative. derivative film that it's, um, using things that we've seen before. Um, for me is one of the reasons why, that, why I, I wanted to keep watching this film was because I was hoping that he did something different to, to, to close out the film. Um, but it, it didn't. So yeah, in the end I was just watching this because, I was really enjoying Ben Affleck's performance and I was really liking William Finch's performance as well because he's one of those actors that... He, he's always been one of those actors when he pops up in a film, I'm like, oh, wow, he's in this. So, 
yeah, it was more those kinds of reasons that I was still watching the film. But uh, yeah, I do. I have this kind of weird feeling that if this film had come out 20 years earlier, we would have been talking about how it was new, fresh, and something that we hadn't seen before. So yeah, but I'm like Kyle, I was kind of uh, disappointed, especially in the second half of the film. But uh, Lee, what did you think? Look, I thought it was really intriguing, um, and of course it made you think, what if we did live in a world where hypnotists can make you do anything, um, including crime or, yeah, or, or things against your will, um, at a point where you're not actually going for a session and willingly being hypnotised, but just randomly in the community, um being triggered to do certain things. Um, so I did find it really intriguing at the start and I really was getting into the storyline. Um, there were twists and turns all the way through it. So I did like that. Um, one of the twists, I guess I was quite proud of myself for figuring that out. Um, but then there were more twists after that. Um, so that, that did keep me, um, yeah, involved in the movie and entertained. I think for me the last probably quarter of the movie um, wasn't as um, intriguing or thrilling, um, but certainly um, I was thinking through the movie. Um, it kind of changed for me, I guess. Like I think it, it starts off more as um, a potential kidnapping mystery um and then it, it changes um, to maybe some kind of conspiracy stuff. Um, and then I felt like there was another change um, twist, at the twist, end. Twist, twist, twist. Twist, twist, twist. Um, in, in terms of you weren't sure what reality was, what it was, like it was a bit confusing and that's it's meant to be like that it's meant to confuse it confuse you and you think hang on what's real what's not um so I did like that but yeah I there was a point where um I was then felt a bit let down like because it had changed so much I thought it was going to be um more of a, a real detective story I guess yeah. from the start and it didn't feel like that at the end. I don't know if you would agree with that, but yeah, I yeah. think it did change no, so did. much, and it's okay to change, but I think it lost where it started from completely. Yeah. I think early on, I was expecting it to be like a um, a, a crime thriller like uh, Seven, um, where you had this kind of warped guy who was using hypnosis to make people do what he wanted kind of thing. Um uh, there's another film that I'm thinking of as well, and I can't think of the name, the one that came out a few years ago, uh, Prisoners, with, uh, Hugh Jackman, um, and I think it was Ryan Gosling, I think. Um, uh, Hugh Jackman. Yeah. It and, uh, yeah. Uh, Jake Gyllenhaal. Jake, That's right, yeah. Jake Gyllenhaal, yeah. Um, I was expecting it to be, like, a, a Seven Meets Prisoners kind of, uh, film, um, yeah, yeah. especially because I didn't know that the film was gonna have, like, the, the sci-fi kind of element to it, so, I think that yeah. was a surprise, a yeah. sci-fi bit that kind of changed the dynamic completely, yeah. and that's where it lost, where it began yeah. from, I think. Even Ben Affleck's own film, Gone Baby Gone, like, I think I was yeah. expecting it to have that kind of feel to yeah. it as well, so, uh... Me too, me yeah. too, yeah. That, that's yeah. kind of what I was excited about. Oh, mystery with Ben Affleck, yeah. Yeah. Gone Baby Gone. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Not yeah. to say that Ben didn't do a great job, I think no. he did do a great job yeah. in this film, and I think many of the actors did a great job in this film, yeah. um, I just think the way it was written, um lost its way a little bit. Yeah. So I'll, I'll kick off the scores. I'm going to give this one two and a half out of five just because Ooh. I was... Just because I hold Robert Rodriguez right up there, like, in high esteem, and I thought this was a little bit of a, a disappointing film, especially considering I was expecting it to be something special with him at the helm. Lee, what are you going to give this one? I'm going to give it three and a half out of five. I still think it had... A lot in it and as you said earlier I think that maybe we're quite harsh on films where we've seen things before but it was quite imaginative um, 
for me, the points loss is really just the direction at the end. And Kyle, what are you going to give this one? Yeah, I'm going to agree with you. I'm going to give it two and a half out of five. Um, as you say, like being made now, like ideas that could have been groundbreaking at well, 20 years ago are instead just very derivative of things which kind of bet it to the punch. Yep. And like the overall, and personally, like the, just the overall shoddiness of the film, um, potentially because Rodriguez was working with family rather than uh, like maybe people at were better at the job i don't know um yeah it's just something like it that because that was something when i was watching it it was like it was it was all like the editing and the music and stuff like that it was it it felt very lazy while watching it like and i think that was it, it wasn't quite up to the standard of what i kind of expect from the better robert rodriguez films so yeah, two and a half out of five for me. So there you go. Two two and a halves and a three and a half for Hypnotic, um, starring Ben Affleck and directed by Robert Rodriguez. You are listening to centralcoastradio.com and if you want to go and check out Hypnotic, um, it's showing in most cinemas right now.